You know what? I praise what happened between the Ravens and Greg Roman today because I didn't think it was going to happen. Um, most people didn't realize that Greg Roman had one more year left on his contract, so that if the Ravens were going to part ways with him, it would either be a firing or a resignation, and today it was a resignation, um, which means the Ravens will be looking for a new offensive coordinator, so the eras of having Greg Roman and Wink Martindale are over with as McDonald took over as defensive coordinator this past year, and as the season went on, got better, especially after the Roquan Smith trade, and we locked Roquan down long term. And now, to me, this this is showing, uh, it's some sort of move that's kind of maybe showing me that the organization is willing to change things for Lamar, because even though we were scoring better with Lamar in, I think we were scoring like 24 points a game, that's still definitely down from where we had been the past couple of years with him. I mean, 2019, we were just scoring left and right. In 2020, we took a step down, but we were still scoring enough. And 2021, we were scoring a lot last year until Lamar got hurt. And this year, it just didn't feel like the same team, like red zone troubles, even with Lamar, were a thing that were happening. And looking back at it, I think it cont contributed a lot to the red zone play calling. When we got, especially at the 10-yard line, when we got to goal-to-go situations, it seemed like Greg Roman just seemed to forget everything that worked for the Ravens and tried to get way too fancy with it. And there were some calls, especially that QB sneak call in the wild card game, that may have led to this decision here because it's just like, you know, you, you have... A running back core of J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, who are averaging over five yards a carry uh, themselves, you know, combined total and even by themselves. And, you know, you have your backup quarterback playing in this game, so a run game is going to be his best friend. Now, that's no offense to Tyler Hundley. He actually played a very, very, not not very good game, because, you know, the two turnovers, but, like, he balled out to keep us in this game and put us in a position to even win, potentially send that game into overtime, so this isn't a shot saying that, oh, you know, we needed to run the ball because Tyler Hundley wasn't doing anything. He was doing all he could. I mean, the fact that Dobbins only got 13 carries that whole game, and it wasn't like he had, like, 13 carries for 30 yards. He had 13 carries for 62 yards. That's, you know, a good amount of yards. You need to at least in that situation give him 20 carries. Split the carries between him and um, uh, Edwards. And I think Edwards ended up having more carries than Dobbins in this case. Not sometimes with the way those two work and how good they are. Yeah, I guess one will have more carries than the other. It's not always going to be one getting, you know, the same amount of carries. Um, but. I just feel like that Greg Roman kind of lost the mojo of what made him good for, we'll basically say that two-year span where Lamar looked or, or was an MVP QB and then looked like he could be an MVP QB again the next season. It just, it felt like it became very stale, and when he tried to switch things up, it wasn't really creative, the things he was doing. It was all just kind of like, why? We want you to get creative, but not this creative or or the, the lack of creativity because there was some times where he'd pull something out of the playbook like a wide receiver throw and you're just like why why do we need to do that like there's no reason that we need to do that at all or maybe it's just being too simplistic like we're gonna run a quarterback sneak from the y uh, yard and a half line but we're gonna sneak it over the top whereas usually when you do those types of QB sneaks you're like right on the goal line and just need to reach over and of course we all know what happened during that play so you know is this move surprising kind of yeah because I did not think he would resign and I thought the Ravens would let him you know play out his contract but I guess not and you know that's fine with me now the question is who are we going to bring in as offensive coordinator and I know there could be some like I know uh, the Jets fans are really um, kind of questioning because they're looking at Nathaniel Hackett to be their new offensive coordinator, but, you know, and I know his failure with the Broncos this year, but that was as a head coach. There was a reason Nathaniel Hackett was hired as a head coach, because of his work as an offensive coordinator, especially in his time in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers, so, 
you know, I'm not saying that would work, but, you know, at the same point in time, I don't want people freaking out when they hear a certain name that wasn't successful as a head coach, but is successful as, like, being another type of coach, like a coordinator or whatever. The one I would say I probably wouldn't want is Byron Leftwich, just because his play calling seems to be maybe even sometimes worse than than Greg Romans at some point, at least watching the Buccaneers this year. So I don't know. So the Ravens are going to be in search for a new offensive coordinator, which to me is telling Lamar, hey, we're going to get you somebody better. We're going to get you somebody that can not only play around your strengths, but around the running back strengths and around the wide receiver strengths, because we need somebody who knows what we have at wide receiver rather than just kind of leave them in the dust. We need to get the receivers involved, but we need to do it to their strengths, and we need to find someone who can do that in a sense, and, you know, still still have it to where the run game is our main thing, like, that we can't, we shouldn't take that identity away, but when we need to get into the pass game, we need to open it up a little bit more. We need to find somebody who can help create that and do that with a sense. Because, I mean, with a healthy Bateman and a healthy Duvernay, the receiving core wasn't doing terrible. But once they left, it was like, my God, I don't know what happened. We uh, Greg Roman was just allergic to calling plays for wide receivers. I don't know. But, you know... In the end, we'll, we'll, we'll see who's going to be hired as offensive coordinator. I don't necessarily think it'll be in-house. The Ravens don't usually tend to do that. But again, we'll see. There's plenty of time to think about it. We got till, you know, August of next year, even though it'll probably be way before that. And this is telling me that we're keeping Lamar here. Um, he, he's most likely going to get franchise tag. That's my thing with this year is he most likely will get the tag and I think the contract will come, but there's also a possibility we could be doing this because we're making changes for him to persuade him to get a contract done. That way we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to hear the questions all the next season. Cause I can tell you too, when Lamar was playing and he had some struggles, I can definitely say that it probably had something to do with the constant questions about the contract and all this kind of stuff when he just wanted to play and not worry about it during the regular season. Again, that's why he gave us the cutoff in the preseason with him being his own agent. Like, after the preseason's over, I just want to focus on winning a Super Bowl. So, you know, if he can just get that done and out of the way and we don't have that distraction anymore, I think that can also benefit us and him as well going into next season. Because I keep seeing these things about where will Lamar end up next year? Jets, this team, this team, this team. And I'm like, he's going to be in Baltimore. We hear this all the time about a superstar that people think is going to be traded or there's rumors that he could be traded and he just ends up staying put where he's at. So... I'm not afraid that we're going to lose Lamar because I highly doubt that it's going to happen. Like I said, either he's going to get tagged or we're going to come to a long-term extension with him now that the season's over. The Ravens have even said they're not going to stop. Neg like, they're going to continue negotiating. Like, it's not like we're not interested in continuing negotiations. It's just now that the regular season is over, we don't have to focus on playing football this upcoming week so Lamar and the team can talk about it. And they have a good bit, I think, before training camp, which is in, what, June, July, to figure this out. So, you know, in the end, it's not any rush right now. And with Lamar's injury, the contract could be getting, you know, skewed down a little bit as well if it comes to guaranteed money and all that. But again... We'll see there. The main thing is Greg Roman, who I believe was pretty much the main problem with our offense. You know, because I know John Harbaugh's the head coach and is probably like, well, if he didn't agree, because he was calling out some of Greg Romain's play calls this year. And it was like, if he's the head coach, why didn't he do anything about it? But I mean, when you hire a guy to call the plays, you know, that's kind of, you know, you, know, you want to stick to your job of being the head coach and letting them call the plays. But, you know, I highly doubt John Harbaugh is even going to step in and be like, it's going to be me calling the plays because he knows He's, you know, as a head coach, he's been good, and he's mainly known beforehand for his special teams, so I don't really think he thinks that he can, you know, take over the play calling. I don't think he's going to do that. I don't think he's going to try to be one of those coaches because it rarely ever works out, so, you know... We will we will see, but I'm confident that Lamar will be back, and whoever the new offensive coordinator is, 
we should just give them a chance before we say anything. Because really, the last really good offensive coordinator hiring from us that I liked was 2014 when we hired Gary Kubiak to replace Jim Caldwell. Joe Flacco had the best year of his career. Our offense at the time was the highest scoring in the team's history. So... You know, but he only lasted one year because then he went on to become a head coach with the Broncos. So, yeah, you know, um, maybe we can get somebody like that who, again, can, you know, have Lamar play up to his potential in a certain offense and just, you know, take what he has and play to the strengths of those players and be able to create them into being more successful in one way or another. So, yeah, that's it for me. You can tell me in the comments below what do you think. But until then, stay safe out there and I will catch you all in the next one.